So Intel Arc lives to see another day, even though Nvidia just bought part of Intel. And guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, this next generation is looking kind of spicy. I had performance estimates for you today of the B770, the C770, and also the C580. Yeah, that's right, Celestial Graphics Cards. Performance leaked here exclusively on Silicon Stake. So boys, you're gonna wanna tune into this episode. Let's get right into it. So a lot of rumors coming out about Intel Arc GPUs right now, whether they're dead, they're canceled, if we're only gonna have iGPUs in the future. Part of that speculation was on my behalf. I didn't know if Intel Arc was gonna survive this Nvidia deal, but it looks like Intel Arc is still going to be alive and well, guys. We are going to see the B770 sometime in the next six months. It looks like that is coming out. The shipping manifests are there. And guys, I have to say the B770, I don't really know who it's for at this point. I mean, with the introduction of the 9060 XT, 16 gig and 5060 Ti and all that, I, I think it's a little bit too late. Show me in the comments, you know, I know this GPU is highly anticipated, but right off the bat, I've been saying this for a while, the B770 is going to be around 4070 performance. If everything scales correctly, if there's not too much driver overhead, which there may be guys, the B770 will be around that performance. Not bad, but honestly, if they charge any more than 350, I don't really see it being a banger at that point. It's gotta be 350 maximum. And then the AIB models could be maybe 375. So B770, I'm just getting that out of the way with the start of this video. It's an okay card, but I'm not really too excited about it anymore. It should have came out over a year ago, to be honest, guys. Now, getting into Celestial GPU estimates, you guys may have seen a couple of my last videos where I discussed that, you know, 50 series is on four nanometer. We're going to 60 series. And I thought originally we were going to be going to two nanometer, but guys, it looks like next generation GPUs also from Nvidia and AMD are going to be built on three nanometer. And that kind of tempers our um, performance estimates just a little bit. Uh, going forward. Now, I came to the conclusion next generation GPUs going from four nanometer to three nanometer would see about a 35% increase in performance based on the same silicon size. So something that is 750 millimeter squared, like the 5090 going to a 6090 of the same size with the same uh, cut down sections of the chip would see about 35% more performance. And I'm kind of happy with that uh, estimate. I'm going to stick to my guns with that until we actually get CUDA core mounts. I think that is a pretty um, conservative estimate. And actually, there's been leaks about this NVIDIA chip, the CPX chip. It remains to be seen if that chip is a gaming GPU or not, but it looks right around 33, 35% faster than the 5090. So, hey, you know, just do the math and these things will actually find themselves out. And today we're going to do exactly that. We are going to do the math for the Celestial GPUs. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to this video that are Intel Arc fanboys. So let's get started with the C580. Now there's a few things that I have to disclose to you guys about these graphics cards. If you look at the B580, it had 20 XE cores uh, compared to the Arc A770's 32 XE cores, but despite it having, you know, significantly less XE cores, it performs 15% faster. And you may be thinking, why is that? It's because Intel Arc Battle Mage had an over 50% increase in IPC. Well, it was right around 50, but then also we had clock speed increases uh, going from the A770 to the B580. Because of that, despite it having significantly less XE cores, like I said, it was 15% faster. Now guys, I think we're going to see something similar with Celestial. I mean, this is a new GPU architecture. There's still a lot of low hanging fruit to to um to pluck with this gpu architecture to get out more and more performance all right i mean it's just like the third second gen of this thing so let's talk about what they could improve so i would also expect to see an ipc uplift going from battle mage to celestial on the xe cores now it remains to be seen how big of an ipc uplift this is it's obvious there are some hardware flaws with battle mage just like it was obvious there were some hardware flaws with alchemist you know number one being the driver overhead i don't know if that's a hardware flaw per se maybe it's software but at this point if they haven't fixed it i want to say it's kind of a hardware flaw right that is something they could fix with celestial just for an example I'm gonna give a conservative estimate. You know, we saw 50, even more than 
um, XE core to XE core with Battle Mage. I think from Celestial, from Battle Mage, we're going to see about 20% IPC uplift. This is my conservative estimate. I think it's honestly a realistic estimate. It's not out there, but it's also pretty much something I could see. 20% IPC uplift, gen to gen on this architecture, all right? So taking the 35% gain we would see going from four nanometer to two nanometer on something like a GPU, multiplying it by 20%, well, that gets us right around 60% more performance for a GPU of the same size, going from four nanometer to two nanometer. Now things are getting spicy, boys. I am getting excited. But first we have to run the numbers here and kind of see what's going on. So C580, finally, we're getting to the C580. This thing would be 60 more percent more performance around a 4070. And that may sound familiar because the B770 would be perform around a 4070. This is RTX 3080 level performance is very decent. And I would expect this C580 to have at least 12 gigs of VRAM, maybe more. So if they come out with this thing at 250, $300, it could be okay. Now here is the one thing that I'm kind of worried for, for Intel Arc. The RTX 6060, I'm also estimating to be around the same performance level. And with that, I'm not sure if people would want to buy Intel, especially if NVIDIA finally gives that 60 class 12 gigabytes of VRAM again, like they did with the 30 series. I mean, think about it, guys. The reason Intel Arc is selling so well right now is because they have that 12 gigs of VRAM at such a low price. And well, if NVIDIA matches that VRAM amount with the same performance, but they have all their features and compatibility, I don't see people really handling to get ARC too much. Uh, I don't know. Me personally, I'd probably go with the NVIDIA card, to be honest with you guys. It's just going to be better for the same price. Now, maybe Intel will sell it for 300 and NVIDIA bumps it up to 400 I don't know. But at that same time, the price performance on the NVIDIA card wouldn't have gone up at all. So I don't see them doing that um, unless they totally just neglect gamers, which could happen. All right, so the C580, 4070 performance. C580, the B770, same performance level. So if you really want that B770 now, just know next generation ARC mid-range is going to match it and probably with less power and probably much better or a much more efficient architecture that irons out some of the driver overhead kinks. I would guess, guys, just guessing here. This is a leak, but I'm really just kind of crunching the numbers and doing it myself now. I think I'm gonna come pretty close to how these actually perform when they launch. If they do launch, I'm thinking these, at least the C580 will launch though. Another thing I need to disclose here is I'm estimating the C580 to be 4070 performance. Now that is if the C580 is the exact same die size as the B580. And this is important to note because this did not happen from the A580 to the B580, right? Um, I believe the B580 is the full GPU die, while the A580 was a cut down die from the A770. And that A770 die was actually pretty big. I think it was over 400 millimeters squared, where now I think it's closer to like 300 millimeters squared for our B580. So if they decide to cut the die down again and just give us uh, 20 XE cores again, but on like a lower node, yeah, it's not going to be that big of a gain, probably only like 30% gain. Now, that is something they could do because the A580 had 24 XE cores and the B580 only had 20, but it was significantly faster because of those architectural upgrades and also node upgrade. Just something to note, guys, I hope they keep the die sizes the same because I think they're a good value for money for what you get right now. I kind of like what the sizes they are now. Now, the moment everyone's been waiting for, the C770. What is this thing going to look like? How much performance are we going to get? Are we finally going to get high-end performance with Intel Arc? Number one thing, depending on this, is if driver overhead's ironed out. If driver overhead is the same, I don't know if we'd be able to get this level of performance because CPUs might not be able to handle it. But 60% more performance than the B770 is going to bring us to the RTX 4080 levels performance and even you could even bring this up to the 5080 if you assume even more ipc gains than 20 percent. i'm going to say 20 percent. i think that is more reasonable so with the c770 i'm going to go rtx 4080 performance and remember the rtx 6070 is going to be a little bit faster than a 4080 probably about 10 15 percent faster than a 4080 so at this point intel cannot charge anywhere close to $500 for this 
4080 killer. It's going to have to be 350, 400 max again. So at this point, you can kind of see a trend coming here where Intel is constantly trying to play catch up with Nvidia's, you know, 70 to 80 class, but the next generation, their 70 to 80 class is 60 class. And uh, the prices uh, and the economy at scale is kind of catching up with Intel here where they they can't sell a lot of cards um, at these low prices because they're losing money, but they have to get market share to be able to sell them for higher money costs. And I kind of get it, you know, same thing AMD's dealt with, but and Intel's really just going to have to sell this 4080 C770 for probably $400 max. And I know that's crazy, but if that six that uh, RTX 6070 comes in at 550 or so, I'd always go with that. I'd always pay $150 more for a 6070, right? Especially if it has 18 gigs of VRAM, they keep that VRAM amount from the Super Series. Now, how much VRAM would I estimate for the C770? I'm going to guess another, just again, 16 gigs of VRAM. I don't really see them bringing above that. I could see them going to 24, especially if we get GDDR7 on these parts. I don't know if they're going to switch to GDDR7. I sure hope they do because by this point, I mean, these cards aren't going to come out for at least um, another year and a half, maybe two years. So, I mean, it could be like a year, probably a year and a half, I would say. I would guess these cards are coming in... Um, probably January of 2027. That's the earliest I could see these cards coming, uh, the Celestial series, but they are done. A lot of people are wondering, you know, is Intel Arc just canceled? Um, and no, Celestial cards are actually already done. They're just working on the drivers for them. Like the Silicon's already, already uh, they finalized that right now. They haven't manufactured all the car, all the cards, but the design of the Celestial cards is done, if that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, a C770 and RTX 4080 performance sounds so good now, but guys, you have to remember this card won't come out for another year or two, probably closer to two years. And at that point, we're going to have a 6070 uh, beating it in performance and whatever AMD has, you know, uh, I would guess it would be called like a uh, 1060 XT or maybe 1070 non XT, probably 1070 non XT, maybe for five, 600 bucks. Uh, that would probably be 20% faster than this or around the same performance. Um, you know, if that's why I'm saying like it has to be priced at $400 and that's kind of the predicament Intel's in where they can't get into that high end market unless they go all in on this high end die and they really got to iron out the drivers before that. So what do you guys think? A C580 at 40, 70 performance, and then a C770 at RTX 40, 80 performance. It's not going to be no slouch, but at that same time, NVIDIA is always going to be progressing, moving the goalposts farther and farther away. What do you think of my math? How did I do? And would you buy it for, I'm going to guess C580, $300, C770 for 400 to $450. Would you buy it? I'm still... I'm still debating it. It depends what NVIDIA charges for their graphics cards. But let me know in the comment section what you think. Silicon Steak, signing out.